You're trapped in a house with a giant killer rabbit. The first thing on your mind should be, how do I get out of here as fast as possible? Well, in this video, I can answer this question by explaining how the speed run is done to help you escape Murder House in just under 15 minutes. So right away here, you'll notice that I chose to just skip the prologue. Prologue is only required if you are doing the 100% category of the speed run. If you're just doing glitchless, though, which is what this category is, you can skip it because it is mostly just walking through a mall without anything exciting really happening. So we're just going to get started here as Emma after skipping some dialogue and uh, going through the usual intern routines or maybe not usual, but at least in this game's mind usual and uh, yeah, that involves, first and foremost, breaking into a house. This is the house of a killer, a killer that dresses a rabbit named the Easter Ripper. And he did very uh, horrible things here. So, of course, we're going to take it upon ourselves to break in and uh, do some live coverage from here and see if this place is haunted or anything like that. Very common 80s horror set up here. But we're going to make our way through the basement upstairs and unlock the front door to let the uh, TV crew in. Just before they go ahead and send us on our first task, which is to bring in all the equipment from the van. They're so kind that they're going to have us bring in not just one, but two briefcases. So we're going to have to make this little trip twice. But the game's doing a nice job of, well, for one, kind of establishing itself in terms of its pace, it, the pace it wants, but also giving you the idea of, you know, your stamina meter, how it's going to work, obtaining items, everything like that, because this game is essentially grab item, go to place, use the item, and back and forth. It is very much one of those games. So after deliver, uh, delivering all the uh, lights, cameras, everything for the crew, we're going to now need to turn on the power in the house. So we're going to have to find a fuse, which is upstairs and into this far right door. Head over to this cabinet and search the right drawer. That'll give you the fuse. You can head down to the basement and plug it into the fuse box. Uh, a little note on this run, I am playing this in obviously in first person. You can run this in the third person option, which is something the game allows you to do. And I am running this using a controller. If anybody was ever curious. So after using the fuse, the uh, washer will start up. Nothing we can do with that just yet. So we're going to head back upstairs, enter the door here, and a cutscene will begin with the first bit of the show featuring Dana and this investigation into this murder house. So quickly we realize that Dana is not very professional, but then Gary, the producer slash director, is not any better. The two are kind of made for each other. But after the uh, the first taping, we're going to head down to the basement to find Dana. She's going to ask us to get her, get her some water. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to run up here, grab a mug, and naturally go over to the sink to fill it up. And as we head back down to the basement, we're going to receive a, a key for our efforts from Dana. And after their brief conversation, get interrupted by Gary yet again. So this is the second taping, and this time we will be tasked with kind of serving the role as a quote-unquote ghost. Um, you'll notice that the, the game will switch you to third person, at least if you're in first person. There, it happened twice. You'll notice I'm just opening the inventory to kind of cancel this. It's like it resets it. I have no idea why the game does this here, but it just does. So like I said, you can either open your inventory, pause the game and it'll fix itself. 
later, many Once Dana says two years, go ahead and run into the back room there and straight in front of you. And uh, that'll create the idea that a ghost just passed by and may happen to catch it on camera. Continue deeper into the house and see what secrets we uncover. This is just pure gold, as Gary would say. So after serving your role there, you're going to head through the darkness here. This is the quickest route back to the steps. So we can get back up to the first floor. With the key Dana gave us in hand, we're going to open this door underneath the steps. No Harry Potter, I'm sorry to say. Grab a flashlight, though, which will be very helpful on your first playthroughs. But really, we don't necessarily need it too much on the speedrun. But you do still need to pick it up so that way we can head to the basement here and grab the crowbar. The crowbar you cannot pick up unless you have the flashlight already picked up. You don't have to equip it, but you do need to have it. So we're going to use the uh, crowbar there on the, uh, the washer and grab the doorknob. We're going to head upstairs yet again with the now red sky. Use the doorknob. Grab the fire poker. So now we have a means of defense. So a little note on this game, as you'll quickly realize, this is kind of a pursuer horror game. However, you can indeed defend yourself. There are items like the fire poker, which if the so if you run into the rabbit, you can fight it off with it. But you need to be very careful as it's very dangerous. But there is also a handgun, which is not in the speed run, but it does exist. It's on the second floor. Actually, I believe it's in this very room the characters are in now. So there are options for you to uh, survive. You're not instantly dead if the rabbit just finds you. That we're stuck here. Just be careful. And we can't get our fucking pizza lunch promised by my producer. Is Anthony Smith executed in the electric chair in 1985 back from the dead and back for revenge on anyone who enters his house? Find out soon if we don't get the fuck out of here. God damn it, Dana. Cut. I want my life. All right. Well, with what this under these conditions? wonderfully this professional and oh, profound girl. moments <laughs> from both Dana and Gary, it is uh, the tragedy of pizza, we found out, but also time to go find Tom, who for some reason is missing and it forced Emma to serve as camera person in that scene. It turns out Tom is in hiding in the basement, uh, so we're going to take this route here, the right side. Again, you can use the flashlight if you so choose. It will help uh, sing through a lot of these scenes. And we're going to head back the way we came, as this is, again, much quicker than the other route. You want to take every shortcut you can that will give you as much stamina as possible. But after getting the key from Tom, we're going to head all the way back upstairs to trigger this wonderful scene. Help me! There's somebody else in here! No! Ah! Now some of you may be thinking I'm horrible for calling that a wonderful scene. I find that scene hilarious. I've always loved it. It works in terms of being, you know, slightly terrifying because it does establish, you know, the rabbit as a threat. And if you do not move, you will be joining Dana. But I just love how over the top it is. <laughs> I've always found it humorous. It's perfect kind of 80s styled fun horror. So we got the letter opener from the uh, drawer in the attic. The attic, by the way, is not a guaranteed safe spot. It is that first time the rabbit goes away after the in that one time. But if you're being chased by it later, it will follow you into the attic. So keep that in mind. So with the letter opener, we're going to come back to the basement, get the magnet out of the drawer there. The magnet will be a quick use. So notice some stuttering in my movement. That is simply to preserve stamina. Just you know, feather tap over and over the stamina. Try to get every step you can without having to formally like all the way slow down to the walking speed. 
We're gonna use the magnet right there in the hole to get a another key. Again, and I finally just kind of have to let the stamina recharge a little bit, but it's enough to get us up to this floor two door where we're going to use that key. Head over to the bed. We're going to meet Gary and Gary's going to meet his end. The Easter Ripper doing what he does best. Blaze Gary like a fish. Guts all over the place. It's great. <laughs> One of my favorite deaths in, uh, in all of horror gaming. <laughs> and after the end of Gary, we're going to grab that black light from under the mattress, head up to the attic, and we're going to use it right away on this white light. Again, I've mentioned before of how this game is very get item, go use item. It is even more so than like a Resident Evil in that regard. So we're going to move the shelf where we can uh, now see is uh, concealing a dumb waiter, thanks to the black light. Ride the elevator down. And we're going to head into this last door on the right. Inside, we'll have a rope. Tying up a uh, skeleton, and that is all we need to do down here. If you're playing this for the first time and you want to read some notes, figure out some things about the game, there are other rooms will have them including the answer to the puzzle uh, for the piano keys coming up but uh, with a speed run you don't have to worry about that and with this video you definitely don't have to worry about that as I will show you everything you need to see as far as the uh, getting through the game goes we're gonna grab the tape from Tom's camera that was in the kitchen and we're gonna head back into the first room or, I mean, excuse me, the room where Gary was killed to grab the egg from him. Then we're going to head into all here, grab the egg from Dana. And now we're going to head into the first room where we got the fuse to use the videotape. And there is said piano right there beside the fireplace where we got the fire poker. That will be our next destination. However, first we're going to go ahead and use that rope that we got in the basement on this bookshelf. How the Easter Ripper does not hear this, by the way, is beyond me. Emma's going to go ahead and pull this shelf over, revealing a hole into the uh, bathroom is the final locked room of the second floor and inside is the real estate agent they mention throughout who holds the third egg the game by the way is tasking you with finding four eggs and that will complete the easter rippers little fun house game whatever you want to call it by the way the code here five 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 two three three two seven seven six six five just count the white keys and put in those numbers and you will get it. It's also old McDonald if you didn't realize. That is also again found in the notes in the uh, basement. That, that will list different numbers because it counts the black keys as well. If you just count the white keys and do the numbers I did, you'll be fine. So after using the four eggs, that's going to open a, the final door here in the basement. Ignore the uh, any hallucinations or random images you may see, unless it's the rabbit. That then you need to run. But uh, anyway, once again down here in the basement, we're going to try and manage his stamina as well as possible. Head up this ladder into the greenhouse for the final conf confrontation with the Easter Ripper. After a slight 180 here, we're going to go and grab a shotgun. And a nice little technique here is we're going to turn and put our back and back up into the spawn point for this Easter Ripper fight. This will allow us to be facing him right away. So we can go fire, fire, back up, fire, fire. I quickly equip the fire poker. One, two. Notice I back up and let him swing. 
And then after the third hit, he goes down. There are obviously safer strats there to where you could fire twice, run, and so forth. But you want to do the melee the same way. Hit, back up, wait for him to swing, hit, and so forth. Rinse and repeat. But yeah, just like that, that is the end of Murder House. You defeated the Easter Ripper. The zombies of the uh, Ripper's victims are emerging. Yeah, this is a weird game if you didn't realize. <laughs> and all this makes, well, I won't say it makes sense, but it's easier to understand, perhaps, when if you uh, see everything there is to have, especially the epilogue, which will uh, not be here. It is just optional as well for the actual speed run. But uh, yeah, there you go. That is the Murder House speedrun. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy this game. Check this game out. I think it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.